Hi, welcome to Project Geospatial. I'm Adam Simmons, and here at the uh, G1 2023 Symposium in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, we're at the Lockheed booth, where we are, uh, I have two awesome individuals to introduce me to what they're doing uh, with the theme of the metaverse this year. So I'm just gonna let both of you introduce yourselves, and we'll go from there. Thanks. Yeah, my name's Lynn Montgomery, and I'm a research scientist at Lockheed Martin Space. Bob Petty, uh, GM for Enterprise Visualization at NVIDIA. Awesome. Well, uh, we're going to go right into it. Let's uh, talk about what we have here and what we're doing at g -Line. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so we are currently working on a prototype for the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. Last year, they came out with a broad agency announcement where they were looking for somebody to build them a digital twin, where we're able to ingest, analyze, and visualize data. So at Lockheed Martin, collaborating with NVIDIA, we thought that we had a good solution. So what we're doing is we're using our backend, which is called Open Rosetta 3D, to take in data coming from satellites, coming from ground-based observations, and coming from model data. We're gonna put that into a common grid, and then we're gonna use AI ML algorithms in order to fuse that data together into something that's more high fidelity, as well as detect anomalies. With our partnership with NVIDIA, that'll then be transitioned into Omniverse Nucleus, which serves as our data storage and distribution. And then finally, we'll go into our UI, which you can see here, uh, which allows us to interact with that data. So we'll be able to take in the, the data that we've been looking at through the AI ML algorithms, as well as interface it through zooming, through panning around, um, and interacting with that metadata there. I think one of the key points of this is that this is all real-time data. Uh, it can all be offline data and real-time data, and that's one of the key uh, elements of a digital twin. This is not just a map of the Earth with data overlaid on it. Uh, being able to take in hundreds and hundreds of sensors of information from around the world live, fuse those together, and then interactively query that uh, with AI algorithms to look for potential problems or conflicts. Um, future versions of this might get into predictions, what might happen. You could you could create a bunch of artificial scenarios to see how someone might have to respond in the case of a weather event. So um, unlike just plain old uh, mapping application, that, that integration of live data, of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence makes this as you know, first ever really digital model, digital uh, twin of the, of the earth. Yep. So let's talk about how much data did you input to make a model such as this? Yeah, absolutely. So this is still a prototype right now. We're currently looking at observations from different satellites, including GOES and JPSS, which also includes FEARS for a lot of our different geophysical measurements. It's on the order of gigabytes, but we're able to scale our model eventually to terabytes or petabytes of incoming live data from NOAA satellites. Well, to keep it live and dynamic, what's the uh, what's the time, the process that before, you know, they get into the system? Is that near real time or is it hours, is it days? Yeah, it's it's it, it can be real time. The way you write the connector, it's, it's up to you. Um, data that needs to be real time, it's real time. The data placement within, within Nucleus makes sure that the feed into the visualization is at real time speeds. Um, everything should operate at the speed of the sensor that's providing the data. Um, and so you can turn that off or on if you just want to look at a historical uh, perspective um, or include both of those. And that, that really is going to be helpful in these future predictions. Yeah. And Nucleus also provides us these exceptional caching services, which allow us to provide that real-time services geographically, no matter where you are within the world. Yeah. Well, the other cool thing about this is that while we're looking at this here, um, I could have a team of scientists all around the world um, in 20 different locations. And we're all interacting with this exact same model in real time, interrogating it in real time, regardless of where they are in the world. Right. And that's that's another benefit of a true digital twin and one uh, built with the uh, NVIDIA Omniverse. So a collaboration aspect of this, that, uh, yes. and that's huge. Yeah. And we're talking about how does that occur? Was it an interface like this? Or are we talking about uh, augmented reality or? or so in the case of Agatha would be the interface that these, you know, in that case of 20 scientists around the world, they would all be using an interface much like this. Uh, but unlike having their own copy and yeah. just you know, drawing on something, hey, look at this, or run a query here, we could all be making interactive queries of the map, of the data, turning data sources off or on. So you get that, that real-time debate and, and constructive interrogation of the model versus this, what's been a very sequential way 
to, to look at whether to, to, to model the aid. So what's the procedure to get data out of this? For example, you might have uh, you know your primary users interacting with a system like this, but they obviously have end customers as well that they might want to take data out, make products out of, right? Yeah, that's a great question. So we have two use cases for this specifically. The first one is what you're talking about with research scientists, where you would want to query a bounding box and then you would be able to export that. Yeah. Um, and it would be a globally gridded product. You could query a specific area of interest that you were also interested in if you just wanted that. Our second use case is that this provides a globally gridded sub hourly product that you can use as an input for initialization for forecasting products. Initially, this is just for weather data that we're looking at with a moving two-week time window into the past, but this can be used for predictive forecasts in the future. Awesome. Well, uh, as we close up here, is there any last minute things you would like to say about the product or uh, or, or being here at G1 today? It's great to be here. It's great to be uh, here with a partner like Lockheed. Um, this, this is, uh, it, it really is groundbreaking in terms of the future of how we model our planet, interact with our planet, and uh, help save lives. Yeah, we're, we're excited to be working with NOAA, we're excited to be working with NVIDIA, and we think this is just a really fun and great project. Well, it's a pleasure getting the insights in what this is and uh, another perspective on uh, how the metaverse is changing our industry. So I'm Adam Simmons with Project Geospatial. We'll talk to everybody next time.